everyone, and welcome back to Reality Check with Jess. I have a brand new update for you, hot off the presses. This has just been released today, January 10th, 2023. The new details, the full details about the IDR proposal uh, from the Department of Education. And I'm talking about the new IDR plans. Remember when they said, okay, we're going to forgive loan balances that were originally 12,000 or less. We're going to forgive those in 10 years instead of 20 years. Uh, we're going to, you know, cap the payment amount at 5% of your discretionary income, and then even raise that to 22, uh, I'm sorry, not 22, <laughs> 225%, you know, above poverty level and all of those details. Um, so we're going to go into that so that you have the full spectrum of the information. I'm going to give you a heads up. I feel like we got a rug pull on this. So please be prepared to be a little bit disappointed. Yes, there are some good things in here, but when you actually go to the nitty gritty beyond the press release, because I'm going to show you the quick press release just so you see where I got the information from, and then I'm going to go into the actual document, um, you're going to be a little bit upset probably. Uh, at least I know I was when I got into the details. Um, and I feel like, again, it was another rug pull. But we'll get into that shortly. Please make sure that you like and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell. For some reason, um, people who have subscribed and even pressed the notification bell are not getting notifications. It's oddly been deactivated somehow by YouTube. So please just double check and make sure that that notification bell is hit on your end. And also comment below. I wanna hear your thoughts on this because you know this affects our real life. Um, I do also have my cash up in the corner as usual to our blessed. And if you didn't get a chance to tune into my my last video yesterday, just really quick. Um, I had posted a video about being priced out of uh, my town. I was even featured on the local news and I showed the clip there. Um, that was in my prior video I posted yesterday. So please definitely check that out if you have the opportunity. I do have a GoFundMe set up. It's gofundme.com slash priced out where I explain my situation. I'm giving some personal details that I normally wouldn't give um, out in public, but this is um, a really serious and desperate situation for my family right now. Um, if you don't have the means, I totally understand because I know I don't have the means, which is why I'm seeking help. Um, so good thoughts are always appreciated. Um, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention if you haven't had a chance uh, to view that video yet. But let's get into this. Uh, bear with me one moment. I don't, you know what? Hold on one second. Let me pull this up for you guys. All right, everyone, so here we go. Uh, this is from ed.gov, the official website for the Department of Education, and it says new proposed regulations would transform income-driven repayment by cutting undergraduate loan payments in half and preventing unpaid interest accumulation. Sounds great, right? Well, if you scroll to the bottom of this, it has the links to it says view an unofficial copy of the proposed IDR regulation. Also right above that it says the proposed regulations and request for information will be published in the federal register tomorrow. The public may comment on both documents through regulations.gov website for 30 days. The department expects to finalize the rules later this year and aims to start implementing some provisions later this year, subject to any changes made based on public comment. So please comment we need you to comment. Um, I'm definitely going to try to comment on this, even with everything going on in my life, because this affects my life as well. This is, you know, one less thing that we need to be worried about. So I'm going to bring up the actual regulations because the thing is with this, this is a press release and something I'm sure you all know, press releases, they're only talking about the positive aspects. They want to say everything is great. This is what's going on, yada, yada, yada. Um, but we're going to get into actual nitty gritty and what it actually says, because what it actually says has some caveats. So let me pull up this PDF and I've got areas highlighted so that way I can get to it quickly for you guys because I'm calling out, um, this is a 179 page document. So I'm obviously not gonna go through all of it, but I'm calling out the major points um, that you know are have to do with essentially these changes and that will affect us. It says in this proposed, and it gives the regulation number, uh, the department proposes to modify the repayee plan to increase the amount of discretionary income exempted from the calculation of payments to 225% of the applicable 
poverty guideline. Reduce monthly payment amounts as a percentage of discretionary income from 10% to 5% for the share of a borrower's total original loan um, value attributable to outstanding loans received by the borrower to pay for an undergraduate program. Not charge any remaining accrued interest after applying a borrower's monthly plan or payment, sorry, and reduce the time to forgiveness under the plan for borrowers to as short as the equivalent of 10 years of qualifying payments for those with original loan balances of 12,000 or less. Now, here's the thing. These are all changes to the repayee plan. So what they're trying to do is basically get everyone on the repayee. That's going to essentially be the plan of choice and then phasing out every other plan. So if you're already on repayee, you won't have to do anything different. If you're not on repayee, then for these, as you'll notice, these are specific to the repayee plan. Um, and it says discretionary, discretionary income would be defined as the borrower's AGI minus 225% of the federal poverty guidelines for the borrower's family size. I like that they've put in what the discretionary income would be defined as because now you can figure it out on your own. You can take your AGI from your latest tax return and then look up what 225% of the federal poverty guideline is for your family size and then you just do that simple subtraction and then take that five or ten percent from that now the thing is there will be a weighted average so you may not be exact i mean if you want you could take the max ten percent and just see or maybe something in the middle but um or if you it's only undergraduate debt you have then you could take that five percent but that should at least help you give you an idea of what your payment would be and it says the department proposes to clarify that for all IDR plans, income means the borrower's AGI, and if applicable, the spouse's income as reported to the IRS. The definition of income would also provide that instead of AGI, the secretary may accept an amount calculated based on alternative documentation of all forms of taxable income received by the borrower. So that means if you're not comfortable providing your tax return, um, if it doesn't really reflect you know, what you're currently making, or you just don't want to give them your taxes. <laughs> um, you Obviously, you can give them your pay stub. And hopefully, now I know that that's a thing you can do right now, but hopefully they allow you to do that online as well. Because if you want to renew um, your plan online, they only allow you to use your tax return, which I think is ridiculous. So um, let's see. So we got to that one. Let me get to these highlighted portions. All right, so in proposed revisions to the repayee plan, the department proposes to reduce to 5% of discretionary income the payment on the share of a borrower's total original loan principal balance that is attributable to loans they received as a student in an undergraduate program. Under proposed, and they give you the regulation number, Borrowers would continue to pay 10% of their discretionary income on the share of their total original principal loan balances attributable to loans they received as a student in an undergraduate program that are still outstanding when the borrower begins using the repayee plan. Borrowers who have outstanding loans for both undergraduate and graduate programs would pay an amount between 5% and 10% based on the weighted average of their original loan, uh, original principal loan balances regardless of whether the loans have been consolidated or not. So for the repayee plan, the department proposes not to charge any remaining accrued interest to a borrower's account each month after applying a borrower's payment. That means that when you make your payment, you're not going to be charged interest for that month. So they're essentially, it's not really an interest-free loan, but in a way it kind of turns into one as long as your payments are being made. And so even if your payment is zero because your income is so low, that would still count as a payment being made and you wouldn't see that balance grow uh, because there would be no interest. Now, it doesn't mean the balance is going down, but it just means the balance wouldn't grow. Um, so that is something that's really important. And then it says, unlike the standard extended or graduated plans, there is no requirement that monthly payments be sufficient to at least cover the amount of interest that accumulates each month. 
While most IDR plans do not charge some of the accumulating interest, the remaining portion of interest continues to accrue in over years, that amount of interest accrual may be significant. As a result, borrowers make the required payments each month, but still see their balances continue to grow. And that my dear, is part of the crisis as well, is that people who have been paying for years have still had their payments balloon. And I'm talking about balloon from like 17,000 to 100,000, just insane stories. And it's because if they're on an IDR plan, they're making the payment that's required of them, but that payment that's required or asked of them doesn't actually cover the interest. The Department of Education said it's so low, but still has the interest accruing. So what happens is now it's being added to their account and then also later being capitalized. So it's interest on interest. Um, so what they're saying with this is because of that fact, they know that the IDR payments most likely for some people would not cover the interest, especially if you're on a $0 payment plan. So in an effort to fix that problem that is with their plan and also to help the borrowers, they're not going to charge interest as long as you're making your payment, uh, which is a fair and reasonable um, meeting point, I believe. I mean, it would be nice if it was zero interest period, um, or how about just free college? But, um, and you know, for what's being offered, that one's fair. Um, so it says not charging any remaining accrued interest to the borrower's account after applying a borrower's payment would also help the department accomplish its overall goals of simplifying repayment. Uh, adding this benefit would further cement repayee as the best IDR option for most uh, student borrowers. And it says this change to the interest benefits would also remove a significant trade off of borrowers between choosing an IDR plan or one of the fixed repayment plans, none of which allow for monthly payments that are less than the amount of interest that accrues each month. The limiting interest ac accumulation would also increase the attractiveness of IDR relative to discretionary forbearance. While borrowers and IDR would still have to make a payment, they would also not see the interest accumulation that happens to a borrower on a discretionary forbearance. This may help more borrowers to enroll in this affordable repayment plan. And uh, it says, and then may reduce student loan delinquencies and defaults to the benefit of the department and of taxpayers. Now, ignore when they say this affordable repayment plan, because it's not always affordable for everyone. Now, for many people, it is, especially if you're, you know, lower income and you're able to get a super low, let's say, zero dollar payment. But for some people, it isn't always. So hopefully this changes that um, when they're talking about the five percent and things of that nature and also stopping that interest from accruing and that balance from growing in that way. So for borrowers who may have already experienced interest accumulation from being on an IDR plan, the department notes that changes to the treatment of interest capitalization and the final rule established on November 1st, 2022 will provide some assistance. That rule eliminated instances of interest capitalization when a, pers when a borrower leaves the ICR payee or repayee plans. That means if a borrower decides those plans are no longer for them or they fail to recertify on time, they will not see their principal balance grow. We incorporated conforming changes here as part of our proposed changes to the IDR regulations. So what they're saying is before, if a person left the plan, all of a sudden, um, I believe that, yeah, their interest was completely capitalized. And interest capitalization is basically saying all that interest you owe, now they're adding it to the principal. So let's say your loan was $10,000. You have, you know, $5,000 in interest, which is insane, but hey, it actually does happen. Now they've capitalized it. So now the loan is $15,000. So instead of paying interest on 10, now you're paying interest on 15. So that's, and you're paying more. Um, so that's what they're talking about here. So it said this rule did not eliminate interest capitalization when a borrower leaves the IBR plan, including if they fail to recertify. However, the, the IBR specifically, the other ones, which are IDR plans, the ICR, payee, and repayee, it eliminated the interest, but it didn't do it for the IBR plan. So now the departments are posing, they say, to partly address this issue through the implementation of changes made in accordance with the Future Act and the Consolidated Appropriations Act, which directs the IRS upon the written request of the department to disclose to any authorized person tax return information to determine eligibility 
for recertification for IDR plans. They say this will make it easier to automatically recertify a borrower's participation in IDR plans. Now me, I have a concern with that. I understand the purpose behind it, but I'm a little concerned that we actually had something passed that allowed them to just get your tax return information, essentially without your permission. Because it says that they allowed the IRS upon the written request of the department to disclose any authorized person, the tax return information, your tax return information, to determine your eligibility for recertifications for IDR plans. Um, very, I don't know, a little uncomfortable for me. Maybe you're okay with it. I don't know about that one, guys. Um, so, oh, and that, the CARES Act, yeah. I, ugh, you know, I mean, th this is the stuff where sometimes people talk about where it's like, hey, you've kind of got these things inserted in there that, that no one knew about. But I digress. We got to that one. Here's the next. Specifically in proposed and then they give the regulation number the department proposes to include deferments tied to military service uh, service in the peace corps and post active duty and forbearances related to national service or national guard duty because the department is concerned that judging the relative trade-offs between obtaining a deferment or forbearance and otherwise making progress toward forgiveness generates confusion for borrowers and results in borrowers inadvertently losing months of progress toward forgiveness because of the complexity. The department also proposes to provide credit toward forgiveness for time spent while the borrower is in forbearance for a loan repayment through the U.S. Department of Defense because of concerns about borrowers being confused about this benefit versus seeking forgiveness in IDR. Similarly, the department is concerned about borrowers being able to successfully navigate between the cancer treatment deferment and IDR when they are ill and undergoing necessary medical care. The department also proposes to give credit toward forgiveness for periods in which a borrower has their payments paused for reasons outside of their control. This would include periods of mandatory administrative forbearance when a servicer, not at the request of the borrower, and for administrative reasons, pauses a borrower's payments while the servicer reviews other information about the borrower's loans. Let's see. And then... Um, here we go, guys. We're getting to the meat and potatoes. This is that $12,000 regulation. <laughs> Let's get into it. While the department is not proposing to change the maximum time to forgiveness, meaning they're not trying to change uh, that you have to be in a plan for 20 or 25 years as the maximum time, they're saying a provision that grants forgiveness starting at 10 years for borrowers whose original total direct loan principal balance was less than or equal to 12,000 with the time to forgiveness starting by one year, increasing by one year for each additional $1,000 added to their original principal balance above 12,000. So basically they're saying is that if you have a principal loan balance, original principal loan balance for direct loans, that was $12,000 or less, you could have forgiveness in 10 years. Now, if let's say it was $13,000, then it would take 11 years. If it's $14,000, it would take 12 years. So uh, for each $1,000 you have above the 12,000, it's going to increase that time to forgiveness by one year, but then it's never going to be more than the 20 or 25 years uh, for undergraduate or graduate debt. And it says the eligibility for the shortened forgiveness period would be based upon the original principal balance of all of a borrower's loans, such that if they later borrow additional funds, their time to forgiveness would adjust to include those new balances. That, my friends, is where we are being screwed, where the rug just got pulled. So if you stuck around this long, Thank you, because this is important for you to know. We got the rug pull. We just got the rug pull, plain and simple. Um, the way they made it seem before, and you know I show documents on every video, they kept saying, if you have an original loan balance, $12,000 or less, it'll be forgiven. 
in 10 years. That is when people were consolidating, moving their FFEL loans over to direct loans, which is still obviously better because of these new, you know, changes with the 5% and, you know, not capitalizing or not adding the income. And I mean, income, sorry, and not accumulating the interest. That's way better than staying with a private lender typically. Um, but right now they're saying that it's not going to be based on the individual loans. It's going to be based on your total uh, loan balance that you have with the Department of Education, which is terrible and which is messed up and which is not okay. Um, So if you have direct loans that are, let's say you, you know, have multiple loans, 5,000 here, 8,000 there, 9,000 there, they can all be under 12,000, but they're not including that under this shortened time of forgiveness now. They're not including it because they're saying that they're going to look at all of a borrower's loans. And the important thing to remember about this is this is a proposal. That is why I said in the beginning, please submit your comments to the Federal Register, federalregister.org. You need to submit your comments because this part has to change. This should be based on the individual loans. And I feel like this is a rug pull because they made it seem like they were going to help people because, you know, everyone has all these, you know, different loans and taken out at different times, even if your loans are taken out 10 years apart. I mean, that's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. And it's unfair. Um, So that needs to change. And I will be submitting a comment on that one. And I hope that the rest of you will join me as well. So we're almost at the end here. And so they're talking about consolidation. So the the main thing, I actually don't really need to read all of this essentially, but what they're saying is that if you consolidate, the clock is not going to be restarted anymore. So that's great. So if you consolidate, um, you know, once this becomes obviously right now for the for the IDR adjustment, if you consolidate now, it's restarting, but then the IDR adjustment, which is supposed to take place in July, 2023, is supposed to give you credit for all those back payments. Um, but they're saying for the new rule, they want to make sure that's not even a problem, that the clock will not restart, which is great, which is necessary. And so they said more specifically, the department is proposing to allow a borrower who consolidates one or more direct loans or FFEL program loans into a direct consolidation loan to count the qualifying payments the borrower made on the direct loan or FFEL program loan prior to consolidating as qualifying payments on the consolidation loan. So if you move your FFEL loan over, what they're proposing is they're going to count all those prior payments. If you have a direct loan already and you've consolidated, all those payments you made on those direct loans are going to be put over into the new loan consolidation. So the way they're going to give you credit for that is they're going to calculate a weighted average of the payments. So a weighted average of qualifying payments made on the original principal balance of all loans repaid by the consolidation loan. So for example, if a borrower has made 30 qualifying payments on loans with an original principal balance of 30,000 and consolidates them with a loan that includes another 30,000 of loans that have never had any qualifying payments, then the borrower's consolidation loan would be credited with 15 payments for its forgiveness. So yes, the time of forgiveness um, decreases for one, but increases for the other. So instead of now having to wait, um, well, they're saying 30 payments, not 30 years, 15 payments. But instead of saying, okay, well, I have zero payments for this now and I have 30 payments for that, now you'll have 15 payments for both. So it does help in terms of getting you closer to forgiveness for your overall larger balance. Um, And that's the main points that I wanted to point out here. Like I said, um, the biggest concern I have is what they're doing with the $12,000 one. I do believe it is a rug pull, so I am concerned about that. Um, But please, again, make sure that you take a look at this. I'm showing you guys this here again. This is ed.gov, okay? When you go to the front page, it's actually going to have this on here under press releases. You click on that where it says new proposed regulations, right? And that will bring you to this page. You scroll to the bottom. I clicked on the PDF here, the copy of the proposed IDR regulation. It also gives you a copy of the Federal Register, right? And that's at uh, regulations.gov. I think I might have said federalregister.gov before, but it's regulations.gov. 
So you can click on that and you can look for it. Um, so please do that. That's really, really important so that you can make your voice known. Um, also, when you look at here, I'm going to go back to this real quick. It shows you, um, you know, where you like what information you can put in there for the Federal Register to to, to find it. Um, and then even the title of it and everything, which is improving the income driven repayment plan for the William D. Ford Federal Direct Loan Program. So, you know, I know it's a lot of information. I'm going to give this out to you guys. I said this is going to be a little bit of a longer one, uh, but it's really important information for you to know. Uh, make sure that you submit those comments. Uh, hopefully they'll listen to us if enough people submit them and they'll change it so that's actually beneficial for us instead of being um, kind of like, you know, fake, uh, fake progress, which is really frustrating because each time we have a little bit of hope, put a little bit of faith into these folks, we just keep getting disappointed. I'm definitely disappointed, um, but I haven't given up. So please don't give up either. Um, so thank you everyone for joining. Please make sure you like and subscribe, leave a comment below. Also ring that bell, uh, to make sure that you are getting the notifications and I will keep you up to date as I find out more information. I know this one is a big one. We finally have the exact language and the exact language is not what they told us it was going to be. So that is very, very, very frustrating. Um, but again, I'll keep you updated as I find out more and I will speak to you guys next time.